models have the 50 PSI close off. HD series are either 200 or 150. This is one interesting thing here. If you look at uh, the butterfly valve section in the PGPL, you'll see two different CV ratings. The reason for that is you'll see one at 60 degrees and one at 90 degrees. We have a 60 degree CV set up because that's what you look at for modulating applications. Because beyond 60 degrees, you're getting your full flow. So you're not going to really be able to modulate anymore after 60 degrees. The 90 degree CV, that's telling you if you're running in two position mode, you know, you're closed or you're full open, that's going to be what you're getting in your full open. The other thing you need to be aware of is that your flow velocity for the standard versions doesn't exceed 12 feet per second. And you may say, well, how, how should I know that? In our uh, documentation, we show you know, this GPM, this size valve, will equate to X velocity. Uh, so you don't want it to be more than uh, 12 feet per second. For the resiliency valves, 32 feet per second for the high performance valves that are metal to metal steel. Any questions on pressure dependent valves? For any of you that have worked on valves, that's probably what you've seen. So now we'll talk a little bit about pressure independent valves. We'll talk about the differences between valve type and identify which are suitable for which applications to be. Our PICCV, pressure independent characterized control valve. It's a two way valve. All pressure independent valves are two way valves. The reason being is you have to be able to sense the inlet and the outlet pressure. You have a three way valve. Got three different ports. Where are you going to be sensing? The PICCVs range in size from half inch to two inch. Flow ranges from half a GPM up to 100 GPM. The applications for PICCVs: water side control, heating and cooling systems, air handling units, reheat coils, fan coils, unit vents, pumps. Pretty much whole gamut of control with the exception again of CV. This is based on our CCV valves that don't handle steam. The PICCV do not handle steam. What, the PI, what we did with the PICCV basically combined pressure independent valve theory with our CCV technology. So the way it works is you're going to get a specific flow, specific consistent flow really, for each opening of the control signal, regardless of any pressure variations in the system. So what that means is, the way you probably have things right now, with any pressure dependent valve, if say you have a, a loop that has 10 valves in it, seven of those valves close. Those other three valves are going to get a spike in pressure, and because of that spike in pressure, they're going to end up getting an increase in flow, which you may not need that increase in flow. So what's going to happen? Well, say it's on a heating system. You're going to start overheating the room where those three valves got the increase in flow that wasn't being called for. So then you're going to have, once that's sensed by the sensor in the room, then building automation systems are going to have to take action, close the valve down a little bit. Pressure independent valve helps from that standpoint that you know it's going to maintain a consistent flow even if you're getting those uh, spikes of pressure. Like I said, prevents overflow or underflow, fast system startup. Reduces pumping based on accurate flow. And it's easy to select because since we're not worried about uh, pressure anymore. I don't know how many of you do valve sizing, but for those of you that do, 
the formula for calculating CV is the GPM divided by the square root of the pressure drop. Since we're not worried about pressure, pressure drop anymore, sizing up the pressure independent valve, you're selecting based on the GPM. And obviously, like, like with CVs, we're not going to have every single GPM available, but uh, we could have half, in half GPM increments on the small stuff. Then as you get bigger, the gap gets a little wider. You can start going to one GPM increments. Then the bigger you go, the, the wider the space is there. Simplifies hydronic balancing. Circuits are not interactive. Really, what, what we're saying is that uh, you don't need a balancing valve when you're using uh, pressure independent valve. Pressure independent valve is going to do all the balancing for you. Increases higher efficiency of both chillers and condensing boilers. Um, pressure independent valves get a lot of play from a lot of different manufacturers for chilled water systems. But a lot of them don't see the benefits as much on uh, heating systems. However, with the Lima, we, we see benefits on heating systems as well because uh, your high efficiency boilers, they require certain temperatures coming back from the boiler in order to achieve the efficiency. So, uh, eliminates the need for a balancing valve in each circuit. It's not going to completely eliminate the need for a balancer and you're still going to want to balance, it, balance the system as a whole. It eliminates the need for the balancer to go to every coil to do balancing. And you know, really, in the real world, once he's gone and balanced everything, once the system is turned on and up and running, pretty much everything he's done as far as balancing goes out the door because nothing is going to be set exactly the way he had. So in looking at a pressure dependent valve here, you can use a flow limiting valve, which in our example here, we're going to cap the flow at 10 GPM. Pressure dependent valve there, it'll be pressure dependent on anything below that 10 GPM max of the flow limiting valve. And the reason we have this slide in here is that a lot of people equated the Valimo ICCV with a flow limiting valve when it first came out. It's not a flow limiting valve. It's pressure independent maintains a constant flow for each degree of opening of the valve. Whereas what we're pointing out in this slide is that with a flow limiting valve and your control valve, it's only capping the flow at the top rating, <coughs> 10 GPM. You know, anything below that pressure changes in the system are still going to have an effect on what's flowing through that valve. So PICCV, single control valve, that's dynamically pressure independent through the full range of control. We'll see how well this works. It works. Yeah, I think this one works. It was a different one. So this is going to show how the flow goes through the, uh, the pressure independent valve. You can see it comes in through this uh, differential pressure regulator is really what this is. And based on changes in the pressure, this cap will move up and down a lot more or less flow through. So from this line to the right, that's basically our characterized control valve, our CCD. So what this portion here is really doing for you. It's maintaining a five pound drop for the characterized control valve. That's why you, you're able to maintain your consistent flow. So they show an example here. We start with uh, a 10 pound inlet, five pound outlet, and that's the minimum. We have to have at least a five pound drop across the valve. Continue to flow what we need. I don't know if you saw that. I'll go back and forth. Watch the, watch the cap here as we change from a 10-pound inlet to a 25-pound inlet. 